In 2018, we embarked on the journey of a lifetime, living and traveling full-time in our self-converted van. We're going to go for it. Join us as we continue to explore the beauty around us, one adventure at a time. This is Anza Borrego Desert State Park, the third largest state park in the United States and the largest state park in California. This is 600,000 acres. It's just enormous with 500 miles of back roads and trails. So there is a lot to explore here. It is known to be one of the most underrated state parks in the United States. So that's right up our alley. Um, I'm happy to hear about that. I can't wait to go around here and look around. And another note is that we are free camping here. So I can't think of another state park that offers free dispersed camping, but I'm sure they're out here, but this is a first for us. So stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll let you know all the details on that. So you can come out here and enjoy it as well. This is one of the things that I've been wanting to see in Anza Borrega. Dave's not super interested in it because, <laughs> you know, he likes the El Natural. Yeah, that thing is giant. At least 15 feet tall. <laughs> it's awesome. impressed yet? <laughs> Mildly. Mildly impressed? That's pretty cool. This is my favorite statue out of all of them. Uh, Dave, <laughs> this one? I think it's great. We managed to get up before the crack of dawn. It was still dark outside. It was still dark outside. It is six o'clock and we are leaving camp. And we're heading for the Palm Canyon trail hike. Yeah, we're going to the main entrance where the campground is. And there's one trail that we want to do. And we have to start early because it is forecasted to be extra warm today. Yes, forecasted to be almost 80 degrees, which is too warm to leave Rudel in the van and too warm to be hiking in the middle of the day. Yeah, and this is a no pet trail, so Rudel is stuck in the van no matter what. Yeah. But it's gonna be quick. I think uh, we're looking at only a mile and a half up in and back, so three miles round trip. Rudel won't have to wait but a couple hours for us. He'll be fine, he'll just be sleeping. Good job, Dave, I can't believe we got up. I know, we did it. <laughs> It is a beautiful morning for a hike. We are one of the first cars in the whole parking lot, which is not a normal sight for us, but the lighting is beautiful. I uh, can't wait to hike up there and see what there is to find. Temperature is beautiful too. Yeah, isn't it nice? I'm a little chilly. I'm going without a coat and a, and a hat but I don't think it's gonna take about half an hour before, or less before me to be overheating. Oh, Rudel's not happy. And that's why Rudel is in the van. Hey, look at that Acatillo to your left. Look at all the blooms about to happen on the top. Oh, it is. 
and it's all about to turn red up on the tips of the tops of the Okatia. It's covered in covered in buds. Bloom buds. I can hear water and that's getting me excited. I can only imagine what it was like to find this little creek, you know, back 200 years ago. In the desert. In the desert where there's no other water in miles and miles. It's crystal clear. They must have been so excited. Oh, I love the sound. waterfall right in that dark spot of that rock. I wish I could zoom in. I don't think there's a way to get to it. Oh, that's cool though. All right, the sign says this way. Doesn't look like this way is an option, but it is, I guess. Huh. Okay. Back here. There we go. We got rocks all the way across. Oh, the water looks very inviting.
These are called the California fan palms. And what's cool about them is they're, they are the only native palm in the West. And they tend to like a lot of water. And so that's why they're, they're usually under a thousand feet elevation in an area that has moist or wet soil. I think that's pretty cool. And you can eat their fruits. Well, this is interesting. It looks like a dead end at first. But you get up here and there's a way through. The trail keeps going. Oh. But this is the end of the trail. There's a sign over here that says end. That's what I was hoping to see, but we didn't see today. There could be one back up in here somewhere. We know we're at their water source. It appears that this is where the water starts. Well, it's probably traveling under the rocks, but this is where it appears out of underneath the rocks. And right where the palms are. That was a cool hike. It sure was. This is a, a true oasis in the desert. Just seeing this crystal clear water come out of the ground and all the plant life and palm trees um, is, is definitely worth the hike. The boulders are just incredible. Yeah. Lots of hummingbirds, but we haven't seen any sheep. No, we've been looking. They're out here somewhere. This is their main water source in this area. So uh, you may get to see them if you come up here and check it out. All right, the views are incredible. It's time to head back down. Yep, we need to go back and check on Rudel. Oh, hi. How you doing? Will you sleep in? Hi, big doodle. Yeah. Big little doodle. I heard you get down out of the bed. Yes, I did. Oh, you were sleeping, huh? Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, big yawn. He was sleeping. We took a little drive. We're only 11 miles away from where we camped. And there's something special, a trail here I wanna check out. It's called the Slot. And it is the Slot Canyon. It is unfortunately over 80 degrees. Rudel doesn't do well in the heat. So he's gonna stay here in the van for that reason and also because no dogs are allowed. So it looks like I'm gonna solo this one and Carrie and Rudel are gonna hold the fort down. There is a self-register station here and it is $10. And if you've already been to another part of the park and pay $10 to camp or get in at any place, it is also good for that same day. So you don't have to repay again. And that's what we did. We were already at the main entrance way. So this is all paid for already and it's time to hit the trail. Coming up on the parking lot, you would have no idea this deep canyon was right in front of us. I see people down in there. So I think the trail goes up top and probably finds a way down inside. It feels great when you're in the shade and as soon as you pop back into the sun. I'm just not built for hot weather. Anything over 80, I just don't feel good. But it's delightful in the shade. Oh, looks pretty steep right here. Oh. So far, it feels like all the canyon is just pretty much mud. All 
right, I have to admit, this is pretty fun. I keep turning off the camera just because I want to save battery. Okay, something super exciting. I want to film a bunch, but I don't make it 20 seconds and I'm flipping it back on again. But the battery's holding out fine. I'll just let it roll for a while. Would not want to be in here on a rainy day. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a slot canyon with mud walls before. I'd say we're about 40 feet from the bottom up to the top right now. And we're getting deeper inside the slot. Oh, it's dark in here. Oh, how cool is this? It's narrower than it looks on the camera. I just had to turn sideways to go through. These nice smooth walls. Yeah, I have to turn sideways even here. Oh. We're back in the sunshine. That was a boulder. Caught right up in there. And it's still a ways to the top. We're at least 50, maybe 60 feet down in the slot right now. Still getting deeper. <laughs> yeah, I think the camera's doing pretty good in the low light here. I don't even have it on that setting. Still, it seems to me like it's doing well. You guys have to tell. We're still pretty new with this action for. And then it gets really bright. So we're really testing it between lights and darks. <laughs> Just enough room to get my foot in this groove and walk around it. Let me turn you around. So that's what we just came through. Oh, that is narrow. <laughs> Don't bring your good clothes. I gotta turn around. Maybe I should be walking up this because every time I turn around, it looks even better. That's what I just came through. <laughs> oh, that is so neat. It doesn't even look like there's room to fit in there, and there barely is. That's tight. If you have claustrophobia, this slot canyon is not going to be your friend. All right, we keep going. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's a whole column. Can you see that? It's a whole column that looks like has fallen over to one side. Oh, neat. Way up there too. Oh, it's so pleasant and cool down here. Okay.
my back. Brutal doodle. Hi, boy. Did you see me up on the hill? Oh, good boy. That was amazing. Really? Oh yeah, way more than I expected. I mean, it wasn't quite wire pass, but it was definitely a second. Yeah? It was like 60, 70 feet high, it felt like. Cool. And just amazing. It was kind of like smooth sandstone or mud. And it was incredible. And worth then, it? Yeah, worth it. And then you get kind of a choice if you want to take one of the slots to the right and then hike up all the way around, or if you want to take a left and go back on, on the road and hike that. So you can make a loop out of it either way. I definitely took the hard route. Well, I wanted to catch a wildflower bloom before we left Southern California. And I think this pretty much qualifies. This is an Anza Brega State Park. Isn't it beautiful? The yellow flowers are desert sunflower and the purple flowers are, I believe it's desert verbena. And the white flowers are another species of verbena. I wanted to come back this evening when the sun wasn't quite as high in the sky. It's not as hot as it was earlier today. And I wish you could smell the smell out here. The cooler temperatures, the very subtle, delicate floral scent. It is so enjoyable. And I'm sitting in a field of desert sunflowers. Look how beautiful these are. I did get a chance to talk with the park ranger this evening and she said even though we're so close to San Diego and they've been having all of this rain, it hasn't made it over the mountains into this area. So she said it's been a dry winter and with the warm temperatures this week, she's like, I think you may have just caught it at the peak, which makes me so happy because that was my whole goal was to hang out here as long as I could to see the wildflowers. And today marks day 10 that we've been here and we found the wildflowers today. Somebody told me about them. Tomorrow we're leaving. So, happy girl. Let's start off, first of all, and address why are you wearing red glasses? <laughs> well, I hate sunglasses and I'll not wear them, you know, all the time. I just hate putting them on. I hate having them on. But these are my drone glasses and it's extra bright outside today. I'm just super squinty. Um, I use them for flying at nighttime so they block out the bright lights and allow me to keep my night vision. <laughs> but, uh, that's why I'm wearing them. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So what uh our favorite, thing our favorite about things about the area <laughs> so mine's definitely the the cacti and just all the different desert plants and the mountain scenery that backs up behind them and it was 
totally unexpected. I expected this to be flat, um, just kind of plain wide open, and it was it's super amazing. I'm just really happy we're here. I have to say, the mountains surprise me. The mountain views are amazing. I'll agree with you yeah. there. But my favorite thing is, well, the statues. Yeah. The Slot Canyon. <laughs> the, the Slot Canyon was amazing. The wildflowers. Mm -hmm. This is an international dark sky community. However, we were here at the full moon, so I can attest to that. Yeah. So let's go into what you need to know about this area. Before we do that, I did want to say that Borrego Springs is the only town in California that is surrounded by State Park. So that's really important yeah. as we go on. Yeah. Okay, so what about this location okay. we're at? So any size vehicle can come in here. The road is a little bit on the narrow side, but the spots are huge. As long as you can back a rig in about a 90 degree angle, you won't have a problem. Uh, there is basically no amenities. It's just an open spot where you can park. There's about 25 of those open spots. So they want you to take those. Do not try to make a new location because it takes so long for the vegetation here to grow back. Yeah, they don't want you more than a car length off of the road. So they don't want you to back way in. Um, there are, again, no trash, no water. Uh, fires are only allowed in uh, metal containers as well. There's no wood out here to burn, so you'll need to bring your own wood. Yep. We haven't seen anybody with a fire. No. Yeah. And you said, okay, any size rig, any size clearance. It's about a, it's, it is a 30 day stay limit. So I thought that was per year. So I thought that was extremely generous. Yeah, it, it is. I think it is. We are getting uh, Verizon and T-Mobile, but the T-Mobile is weak. So if you have a booster for that, it may help. Verizon is also weak in this area. This, in fact, this is the first time in two years that we had to go to the library to upload a YouTube video. Yeah. And speaking of the town of Borrega Springs, it is a very nice town. It is extremely uh, van life friendly. It's bicycle friendly, uh, nice bicycle paths. Yeah, matter of fact, we're only about five miles away from town ourselves and plenty of people are just taking their uh, electric bikes or regular bikes and just riding them straight into town, getting supplies and coming back. So anytime yeah. you can do that, that's pretty cool. There's a nice park in the center that you can hang out during the day. The library was really nice. It was really fast. I will say that the groceries are extremely expensive here. Yeah, so if, <laughs> if, if possible and uh, you're looking to save some money, so, you know, obviously buy your groceries before you come into town. But it's nice that everything is still available. You can get gas. You can go out to a restaurant to eat. Um, you can go food shopping if you yes. have to. So it, it is available here. Now, if you did want to stay long term here and you did want to do the 30 days, the best I can tell the nearest place to really go and stock up would be El Centro, which is about 67 miles east or Coachella, which is 67 miles north. So they're equally distance, but they'll have every amenity that you will need in those towns. Yeah. Again, the state park, I guess we have to talk about the state park because yeah. it just kind of overwhelms this area. Let's start with, it's not extremely dog friendly. It's not, and just because of, well, basically you have to keep your dogs on certain areas and you can't take them on trails. And at first I didn't understand that, but looking into it, the, uh, the, the bighorn sheep that are in the area get really spooked to pets and they are endangered. And so they're just trying to protect the endangered species here. And you really don't want your pet to be anywhere out in the boonies anyway because there's so many things with spines on them yes so it's he's rudel's all right our dog's all right when he's on the road here it's decomposed granite but if he gets off the road at all he almost he doesn't even want to go off the road now he's gotten a couple stickers there are the uh, teddy bear cholas i think people call them the jumping cholas yep. and even if you stay clear of those the wind will blow them in the grass and you won't see them and they just stick in you like something fierce and when you try to pull it out, it's extremely painful or it sticks into that side. Sticks into your hand. <laughs> so my tip is walk around with either a comb or a fork because you can pry them out. Yeah. So that's really bad news for dogs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> um, also, I'll, like there's many, many trails in the park. They can't go on the trails. They can only go in campgrounds, paved trails, and where cars can drive. Yep. 
Now, if you have an off-road vehicle or a street legal off-road vehicle, there correct? There is 500 miles of back road trails where you can take vehicles and, yes. and explore. And there's even groups that they hold sessions where they go out and they take two or 300 mile tracks and it would be amazing to do that. It is. This is an amazing area with lots to do. I think it has something for everybody. So if the statues aren't really your thing and you're more into nature, you have a lot to yeah. choose from. Yep. Do we miss anything? Yeah, I was going to say if you need showers or water or to dump, um, it's easy just to go to the state park, which is only about seven miles away and pay the day use. And that is included with the day use fee. So it's not yes. like you're sneaking in. Um, you do have to buy tokens for the showers. Um, but it's nice to have that available. So we did take advantage of that. Uh, there's probably other options too. There could be another RV park or whatever. There is a Legion RV park here uh, where if you're a member or even if you're not a member, you can uh, pay a certain amount of money and use their dump and get water from them as well. Yeah, having talking about the state park, we did verify that with the gate guard. He said, yes, showers are included. You do have to buy the tokens. The tokens are a dollar for two tokens, dollar fifty for two tokens, yeah. and each token is two minutes. So that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah I thought it was fair. And it was nice to have that available, especially <clears throat> if you're going to long term camp here. Uh, you're going to need somewhere. Yes. Now, we were going to spend the night in the park and then hike up Palm Canyon. And we think the absolute best site, if you don't need hookups, is site 107. Yeah, and, reg and register that online or reserve it online in advance, too, because it fills up fast. I think it's full for the next few months. Yeah. And my only rant about this area, and it's any area where you have to go under reservation.com, to reserve it's a pain in the took us yeah and then they charge you like 8.99 reservation fee yeah, nine dollars just to register plus the campsite so for us it's starting to get out of range yeah and we usually don't pay nine dollars for a campsite yeah we don't even pay the <laughs> registration cost for a campsite so i think uh what was it 35 dollars a night for 35 dollars a night and that wasn't with hookups no that was just no. a basic place to camp i also wanted to mention it gets very very hot here yeah. so from april to october um, I don't know if you could stomach this area. You I have could, to well, be a heat lover. Some people can, but we can't. We're already getting too hot. It's the end of February, and it's just about over our limit. If you come in April and you do any of the hikes, they say that you need to travel with at least one gallon of water with you per person. That's a huge amount of water. We are here in February. They have already spotted two Sidewinder rattlesnakes in the state park on the Palm Canyon Trail. Yep. So uh, be aware you are in the desert. There are more cactus here than I have ever seen. I'm sure there are tons of rattlesnakes and uh, make sure you stay hydrated. Yeah. We are missing out. We're leaving right before the Ocotilla start to bloom. Oca Ocotilla. Ocotilla start to bloom. Yeah. So uh, I'm a little bit sad about that. But I did catch the wildflower yep. peak, so I'm happy about that. Okay, we can head north now. Yep. <laughs> All I... right, guys. I know this is a long video. We did a lot of stuff. We loved this area. We were surprised by this area. Yep. It took us a long, long time to come this far south in California. It did. I'm glad we, we liked, did, though. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely loved it. I think you will, too, if you get a chance. Please check out these areas. Yeah, I, I hate to add anything because this has been going so long, but there's a couple things that we didn't get to do that I would recommend if you have an off-road or four-wheel drive vehicle, and that would be the Mud Caves uh -huh. and, and Fonts Point. So we really wanted to do those. We couldn't do it. Uh, just two spectacular areas. Yes. Uh, maybe you will be able to do that and let us know how it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we covered everything. We covered everything. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you next video. See you next week. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. Thank you for watching.